Hi, this is JP from Not Lights Over Arkham. Welcome to a uh, constructed uh, playthrough of the Passage Through Mirkwood scenario. I decided to search for a decent uh, deck using all the cards available in the core set. And uh, I found a deck with the help of a friend from uh, Discord. and. It is a multi-sphere uh, of influence deck with leadership, lore and spirit. There is also uh, one tactic card in the deck, but uh, I decided to try out a pre-built, or not a pre-built deck, but a constructed deck that is uh, found to be good in the core box and play that deck throughout all the scenarios and I decided to start from the uh, first introductory um, scenario to see how the deck functions. Uh, first off, I think we should look at the deck. Okay, and the deck is published on ringsdb.com and it's a uh, tons uh, single core set solo and it uses three copies of the old core set, but you can find all the needed cards in the revised core set. Uh, as you can see, the deck has one tactics card, which is Bairn. Uh, the only way to get Bairn into play is sneak attack uh, or uh, some other cards, but there are ways to play Bairn even without a, a tactics hero. Then uh, there are a lot of allies. I won't go into big detail because I still am learning the game and not that familiar with all the cards, but the main point is to... Uh, Recur Gandalf a lot if possible, either by sneak attack or playing Gandalf from the discard, for example, or getting Gandalf back from the discard to your hand and playing Gandalf because Gandalf is a powerhouse card. And of course, there are a lot of cheap, cheaper allies uh, that can be played to help out uh, defeating enemies and uh, completing the quest. Uh, the attachments are pretty basic because the core set is quite basic in in overall. Uh, the events are plenty and they are mainly spirit and uh, leadership. Only one lottery and wealth there. But uh, if you want to learn more about the deck, then uh, read the Satan's description. Uh, of course, this is a six-year-old deck published six years ago so and nothing new for older players but you, if you are start, just starting I think you should read, uh, read the basic points of gameplay strategy from the site but that is basically all I want to say about the deck uh, our heroes are uh, Eowyn, Reavor and Theodred uh, Eowyn is a really strong uh, questing character uh, Bravor can get you cards when you need them because you are discarding a lot of cards with some of the abilities. And Theodred lets you get res um, those resources to those heroes you need when questing. So I think these three combo quite well together. And the starting uh, threat is 27. But that is basically all I wanted to say about the deck. So I'll put the deck list into the video description if you want to try out this deck. Okay, and we have already set up the scenario, and uh, I think that is all, so let's get started. So, we have set up the scenario, we have our player deck shuffled, uh, we have the encounter deck shuffled, I already put the uh, setup instructed uh, enemy and location into play, and uh, we are ready to begin. So, uh, I will read the uh, quest text when we advance. So, uh, you are traveling through Mirkwood Forest carrying an urgent message for, uh, from King Theod uh, Thundering to Lady Galadriel of Lorien. As you move along the dark trail, the spiders scatter around you. And uh, then there's uh, fluff text from The Hobbit. I won't read the fluff texts. 
but I read the story text when they, it comes. So uh, we have to uh, quest for 8 progress and we have to of course defeat the enemies and travel around. So uh, I did a playthrough, uh, a pra practice playthrough of this scenario and found out that the start is a bit difficult if you don't get the right cards. But after that if you get the situation under control this is, deck is quite a powerhouse. So let's see how this playthrough goes. So we'll draw our opening hand of six cards. So we get uh, Son of Anor, Ever Vigilant, Stand and Fight, El uh, Ereb Born Hammersmith, Unexpected Turret and One Sworn Born Scout. Uh, I actually feel like I'm going to mulligan this. Let's see if we get a better starting hand. First couple of rounds are really crucial, so this deck needs to get up uh, running right from the start, I feel, but we'll see. Okay, so six more cards. And we get self preservation, hasty stroke, uh, Gleovine, Lord of the Citadel. Orion Wealth and Steward of Gondor. So, not the best starting hand, but it is what it is, and we'll try to do our best with the hand we are given. So, I will uh, lay down my hand over here so you see what cards I have in my hand, and this is the play area, so everything that is in play will be on this um, player play mat. And first off, uh, we start the uh, game by the resource phase, so we had resources, and we really don't have a lot to play yet, so let's hope we draw something to something. Well, we've got the Snowborn Scout, which helps us uh, a lot. Okay, so, immediately uh, uh, remember that we have to spend the resources from uh, the hero with the same uh, sphere, sphere of influence, so we can't, for example, use Elvin to play the Snowborn Scout, so we'll have to, uh, in the planning phase, use uh, Theodred's um, resource to play uh, Snowborn Scout. And that is uh, basically all we can play, but uh, we can uh, use Elwin in the combat phase to play Hasty Stroke, for example. But Basically, we are just trying to accumulate resources to play these other cards, but we'll see how that, that goes. Okay, well... Let us think. So, we are facing uh, four... Uh, uh, three... Uh, threat. So, we need to commit uh, some characters to questing. So, I'll commit Elvin for four. I think we are not able to defeat the forest spider this turn, so I will just uh, start dealing some damage with Veravor. Uh, so we'll commit Theodred, so we can add one to any. Uh, let's see, after Theodred commits a quest, choose an, a hero committed to that quest, add one resource to that hero's resource pool. So we can also add it to Theodred, so we'll do that. And uh, that is the questing done. Uh, let's see. So we are uh, 4, 5 versus 3, so we get an encounter card, and it is uh, Black Forest Bats, so it is uh, one threat. I think we just want to kill this off and uh, take the damage from the other one. Let's see. When revealed, each player must choose one character currently commit to a quest and remove that character from the quest. The chosen character does not ready. So we uh, decide it's uh, Theodred. So uh, let's see. We have we are four versus. We 
R4 versus uh, 3. Uh, 4 versus 4, because the bats had 1. So, I'm thinking... Uh, not feeling that we need the card draw that much, so I'm discarding uh, self-preservation. Oh yeah, um, that's not. Uh, we'll discard the Lorien's wealth. So we are up by two. No, we are up by one because. 4 versus 4 plus 1 is 5, yeah, so we advanced the quest by 1, and that is it, we'll go to travel phase, so we will travel to the Oak Forest Road, which will ready one of our uh, characters, we ready Theodred, so we have more attack power to deal with the enemies, then uh, we will take uh, defend against this with this, and this just comes into play and hits for two. And I'll put the two damage on uh, Bear of War. Then, oh yeah, um, let's not get ahead of ourselves. We need to deal shadow cards. So let's see. First up is this one. Deal one damage to each and exhausted uh, character. Okay, well. That is dead, and uh, Elwin takes one damage. Then this card... <laughs> Deal one damage to its exhaust character. Well, Elwin takes another. That is not looking good. And then Bearwar takes two from the bats. Then we get to attack, so Bearwar will defeat the bats. And uh, Theodred will hit this enemy, but it has defense for one, so it only takes one damage. And that is the combat phase done. We'll go to refresh phase, we're ready. And uh, that is it. So that is the first turn. I think it went okay, but we can do better and hopefully we'll get some good cards uh, in play next round. So that is that round, let's go to the next round. Yeah, oh yeah, and at the end of the refresh phase I forgot to add threat. Uh, so we increased the threat by one. We are at uh, 28. Then uh, we get resources uh, at the start of the next round. Resource phase. Oh yeah. Mm. Uh, let's <clears throat> back up uh, a bit, because I played this in my previous gameplays wrong, so we don't deal any damage from these uh, in the uh, shadow phase, so back up. Uh, these damages are not done, so we are just making the game <laughs> harder for ourselves, so it needs to read the shadow uh, to have the shadow effect, so we didn't have anything to cancel in the combat phase. Okay, uh, let us think about it. We really want the Steward of Gondor into play. And uh, I think we will skip quest in this round and try to do something else, so uh, yeah, we added two resources, we draw a card, we get the Son of Arnor, at the Son of Arnor enters play, choose an enemy card in the staging area or currently engaged with another player, engage that enemy, so not helpful for true solo that much, or we could um, get enemies out of the staging area if there are some. Uh, so, planning phase, I think uh, we'll play Stuart of Gondor, and there are a lot of... Uh, ...choices here, we could play it on Theodred, or 
Terravore. But I'm thinking we'll play it on the Dread. Okay, then uh, we'll play uh, Gleovine. We'll exhaust this for as an action. Gain two resources, use those two resources to play Guard of the Citadel. So I'm just double checking. So attach hero gains the Gondor trait, action exhaust third of Gondor to add two resources to attach hero's resource pool. So we get the, some boost to our resources. Okay, and uh, that is the planning phase done. We go to quest phase, so we got some allies into play, so... Mm, I think we'll quest with uh, Glowine and Elvin and re leave the rest up. Then uh, we will do the questing phase, so uh, we'll get a public guard and it is... Uh, uh, it's uh, for, for Eyes of the Forest. Uh, when revealed, each player discards all event cards in their hand. So we have uh, one event. So bye bye, hasty straw. Then uh, we are four, five against zero. So we'll add three here and two here. We are making some progress. Still looking decent, and uh, then uh, we will go to travel phase, nowhere to travel, encounter phase, optional engagement, nothing happens, engagement checks, nothing happens, no enemies to engage, uh, we'll defend against the, the forest spider with the guard of the citadel, Deal sh shadow cards. We get a shadow card, and it is. It doesn't have a shadow effect, so nothing happens. Then this uh, guardian of guard of the citadel is defeated, and uh, Beravor and uh, Theodred will attack this. Uh, it has a defense of one. We hit for four, and it has three remaining health, so it's defeated. And that is the combat phase done. We'll go to refresh phase. We ready. And uh, we'll draw. Uh, add one threat here, so 29. And that is the turn done. So that is that turn. Let's go to the next turn. Uh, we start the next round by adding resources. And we draw a card, we get the Celerian Stone. So attached to a hero, restricted, attached to hero gains plus two um, willpower. So I think we, we'll uh, go to planning phase we'll, uh, as an action, gain two with Steward of Gondor. Then we will use two to play. Celerian Stone on Elwin, and I think that is all we will do this round. Mm. We'll quest with Elwin and uh, Cleowin, so we are six versus seven versus zero. So we go to the encounter. No, uh, we'll do the staging next, so uh, we'll get uh, caught in the web. Uh, when revealed, the player with the highest threat level attaches this card to one of their heroes. Count as a condition attachment with text attach hero doesn't ready during the refresh phase unless you pay two resources from that hero's pool. Uh, I think we'll have to put it on Theodred. So, uh, that is that. We still can use the steward because that is an attached card and so it's ready, but the hero won't ready. 
So we advance this because we add 6, 7 against 0. Okay, so we find a fork in the road. As you move through Merkwood, hundreds Hunted by spiders, the forest path of forks before you. Unsure of what lies ahead, but spurred by the urgent of your message, you choose a path and proceed. So we have to uh, force when you defeat the stage, proceed to one of the uh, two chosen path stages at random, and we have to get two progress on this to advance. So no uh, enemies will skip encounter and combat phases. We'll go to refresh phase, we're ready. And uh, actually, uh, we'll do uh, in one of the encounter or some phases, we'll do the uh, this ability to draw two cards. We get Paramir and uh, Test of Will, then we're ready. I think that is legal. <laughs> Correct me if I'm wrong, but yeah, still uh, uh, quite new to the game and the action steps, etc. etc. So, uh, we done the ready phase, we'll add one threat here, so we're at 30. And that is that turn, let's go to the next turn. We add resources. Draw one card. So, Grim Resolve. Ready all characters, uh, character cards in play. Okay, so I'm thinking we can play the Grim Resolve to the next round to do something special, but for now I'm using the. Oh, yeah, this should have ready. So, I'm using this in the planning phase to add two, and I'm spending three. Play uh, Son of Arnor. No, we'll play Faramir. It's better. Then uh, I think that is our actually. Yeah, that is the that turn uh, that phase done. So. No more planning, so let's see. Exhaust Faramir to choose a player. Its character control by that player gets plus one until the end of the phase. So next round we'll definitely use Faramir for that. And just quest like hell if we need it. Or do something else, we'll see. Um, we'll go to the uh, questing phase. So for uh, Elvin for sure we'll quest and I will quest with Faramir. And uh, I'll quest it. No, no. Uh, I think that's that's overkill. We only need two for this, and we have the ability to discard one card if we need to. So let's see what is the encounter card. It is the Necromancer's Pass, so it's three. That is not uh, too much. So let's see. It has to travel. The first player must discard two cards from their hand at random to travel here. So I think we'll travel there. By, by the way if needed, but mm, let's see we still uh, advance this and we get to choose a path so shuffle the paths and we'll pick this one The trail winds into one of the darkest, most uh, tangled parts of the forest. You sense that the full dark presence is hunting you. You move quickly in an attempt to avoid its evil. So, Baron's Path passes through the Mirkwood. So, we need 10 to pass this. You attempt to follow the secret hidden trail to avoid the enemy. Uh, players cannot defeat the states while Mongolia spawn is in play. If players defeat the states, you have won the game. So we need to uh, get this defeated and to do so we will travel here. So we have to discard uh, two cards at random. I 
defeat uh, self-preservation and the son of Angnor. So we have Grim Resolve and uh, Test of Will. Okay, uh, then I will, because we didn't draw an enemy or anything, we'll draw two cards. Now we get uh, the, col uh, uh, the Color Dreams Greeting and we get the Protector of Florian. We'll also draw a card with that. So then uh, we will go fast and counter phase, combat phase, do those actions somewhere there. Then we'll go to refresh phase, uh, we'll re refresh. And that is that, and we add one threat here, so 31, and we have a good chance, we only need 12, 12 uh, next round, so we'll do our best to get that done. But that is that round, let's go to the next round. We add resources. We get a card. Uh, Steward of Gondor, we can't play a second one, but we can discard it to boost Eowyn. Uh, so that is the resource phase. Planning phase, we will uh, use one to play, not the test of will, but the protector of Lorien. We place it on Peravor. We can boost her willpower also. Let's see what this card does. So action reduce one threat, uh, one player's threat by six, or reduce each player's threat by two. So I think we'll actually play this. We don't have uh, anything really good to uh, play with Elwin's accumulated sources. So I'll play this. We reduce this by six, so we're down to twenty-five. That uh, stops some bad enemies from engaging us. Uh, then we'll use the Steward of Gondor to add to threat here. It's already exhausted. Doesn't really matter. We will use uh, Paramir to exhaust. Everybody gets one willpower. We will quest with everybody. So one, two, uh, so two, seven, nine, uh, math is hard, eleven, thirteen, and we get an encounter card. It is, uh, uh, Great Forest Web, uh, two threats, so we'll see, so we can discard three times with this card, so I'll do that twice, and I'll use Elwin once, so we are at 15 against two, so that is 13 plenty, so we will uh, defeat this one, we will defeat this one, and that is game, so just add these here. Actually, over. Get that uh, one over the limit. So, uh, well, that was pretty fast game. Uh, we were able to get that uh, quest done pretty fast with Elwin and all the boosts we got. And uh, even though we didn't see Gandalf at all. It, it didn't matter, the deck seems to function pretty good without the first two turns I think are the crucial ones. You need to just survive those and get some uh, cards onto the table and then start clearing the uh, staging area. Then uh, Elwin uh, can start grinding the quest down. So that was uh, Pass it through Mirkwood done with uh, the deck I'm using. Uh, if you are interested in trying out the deck, it, uh, the, the deck list link can be found in the video description. Hope you guys like this playthrough, thanks for watching and until next time.